Bonjour mes amis. Hello my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? Thank you for coming today and welcome back to senior elementary art class. Our lesson today is called Controlling Bristles. For today's lesson, you will need a graphite pencil, an eraser, a ruler, watercolor paper, paints and brushes, a cup of water, a palette, and a paper towel or rag. Today's lesson is about the round brush. Whether synthetic or natural, a round brush is the basic watercolor brush that most watercolor artists feel comfortable using. However, Remember that even this brush can produce a wide range of marks depending on how it's held and the direction in which you move it. Gaining control of the round brush. It's hard to gain control of line width when your hand is off the paper. This is why people sit down to paint so they can steady their hand on their elbow or wrist. The way around this is to use your little finger as a depth control while holding the brush vertically. This allows you to control the stroke weight while you remain standing. This technique also makes it possible for you to twist your brush to produce a fine point at the end of a stroke. Let's do a little exercise called get control of your brush. First start by placing your watercolor paper in the landscape position. Then prepare some watercolor paint in your palette. Now, with your ruler, draw a vertical line through the middle. Now load your brush with paint. Now, here's a little tip. Remember not to overload your brush. Rub your bristles along the edge of the cup to remove any excess paint. Now I want you to hold the paintbrush vertically in your hand, in the air. Try to paint, paint a fine horizontal line with uniform width, with only the bristles touching the paper. So no fingers, hands, or arms touching. Now, support your hand with your little finger. Lower the tip of the brush until it touches the paper and try to repeat the same line. You should feel more, uh, more in control of the paint. Do it over and over again until you feel comfortable to drawing a line that is always the same width. Now, changing the pressure how hard you press on the, uh, on the brush tip will change the width of the brush stroke. So try to paint a line that changes width from thick to thin to thick to thin and so on. Make sure the bristles never leave the surface of the paper. Do this a few more times. Now, the more often you do these practices, the more you'll develop control over your paintbrush. The next part is try to paint a branch with twigs. So make sure your line thins out the further you get from the start. 
Now I want you to try and paint a plan that has very thin stems and a long, skinny, curving leaves. So to make the leaves, you start with very little pressure. You end up with more pressure towards the middle and then you taper off with less pressure to a tip on the end. I discovered here it's actually easier to pull the brush. I try a few leaves by pushing the brush, but it doesn't work very well. So here I decide to start pulling the brush, again starting very thin for the tip, going thicker and going back to thin afterwards. My last exercise for you is try to paint lines with varying widths, but group them together without having them touch. So you should be able to see a thin white negative space between each line. Take your time for this. This demands a lot of concentration and control. This piece is called Sunset at the Super 8. It's a plein air painting by James Gurney made with watercolor on paper. So what do you think was painted using only one controlled brush stroke? The telephone poles were done in this manner. Also, the electrical wires with a very thin brush. And any other small detail you might see that really is just the width of a brush. This piece is called Swamp Along Rutson Road. It's another plein air painting by James Gurney made with watercolor on paper. So what was painted with a single stroke with varying widths. The tree bark was done by carefully doing lines that vary in widths to create the texture. The reflections in the water are done with lines that vary in width as well as turn back and forth. And the tree branches, just like the ones you practice, are done with a paint, a, a paint stroke with varying width. So what was painted with a controlled group of strokes? Once again, some of the reflections were painted with groups of strokes to show some ripples in the water. The forest in the background is actually created with a pattern of vertical strokes. Our project today is called Composing Lines. Now let's start on the right side of your paper. Draw a horizontal line across the area. Below it is a river. Do not draw any details. Now prepare some green paint. Now starting at the line, 
paint many plants with thin stems and long curved leaves, just like we practiced. You can see I'm painting the thin stems first, then I'll go back and add the leaves. I'm also going to be overlapping the leaves and that's okay. It just adds a bit more depth to the composition. Now I want you to prepare some brown paint. Now starting from the middle of the river, paint a thin tree trunk using a group of vertical lines. The lines must keep the same width from end to end, but different lines can have different thicknesses. You're going to notice that doing a vertical line is actually a little harder than to do a horizontal one. Just take your time. It doesn't matter if it's a bit wiggly, it just makes the bark look rough. Now, above the horizontal line, paint some branches coming from the tree trunk. Remember to make the lines thinner the further they get from the trunk. All right, now I want you to prepare some blue paint. Now below the horizon line, paint a group of horizontal lines with varying widths. To gain a depth effect to your composition, Use perspective and start your lines very thin and make them get gradually thicker the closer you are to the bottom of the page. I actually start with a thin round brush at the top. and As I make my way down, I switch to a medium round brush and then to a large round brush when I'm near the bottom. This helps with the perspective effect. Thank you, my friends, for joining Senior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I'm sure you created some amazing art. The more you practice these techniques, these um, abilities, the better and easier they'll become, the more amazing your art will seem. Prends soin de vous, take care of yourselves, and I will see you next week. Au revoir.